Professor Witte, did you hear any wealth creation ideas coming out today from that speech? Well, there was the, uh, the support for micro and small and medium enterprises. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think on, on, on the whole question, and, and, and talking about safe and respectable environments for doing business, uh, that is creating stalls and all of this, uh, making sure that you do not delegitimize uh, enterprise. Now, that's, that's one part. But I think at this point, I would think about it as just the headlines. I don't see the details in terms of what the government is exactly going to do. You talked about releasing this money to support micro, uh, small and medium enterprises. Uh, the devil is in the details in terms of how that's going to be executed. Uh, who's going to get what, when, and where, and across the entire universe of, of, of these kinds of businesses, how are you going to prioritize who gets what? Uh, and, and, and how is this going to be channeled? Is it, how are we going to use devolution, for instance, uh, to arrive at uh, a determination of who got, gets what and where? Uh, the other one is about agriculture, because the, the economy r r really kind of rests on the backbone of agriculture. And, and I say this again, in the campaign period, mm. and in the presidential debate season, uh, the, 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 the two candidates were absolutely lofty in their imaginations of, and in a very narrow sense, that all you need to fix agriculture is to throw hybrid seed and fertilizer to the soil. It is much more complicated than that. The agricultural sector growth and transformation strategy that was done by this government under Kyunjuri's leadership, who is now an ally of President Ruto, uh, basically said that we have no basis for even making fertilizer recommendations because we have not done uh, credible soil testing to begin with. So now I see this 1.4 million uh, bags of fertilizer or tons of fertilizer, and I'm wondering who's gonna go to get what and where and what kind of fertilizer? Because we have DAP, we have uh, calcium ammonium nitrate, uh, we have uh, urea fertilizers, and, and, and we have uh, NPK blends and all of that. Now the question is what's gonna go where? And during this short season, uh, as we said in the beginning, a lot of this is going to tea plantations. These are wealthy people. And then we are at the tail end of the growing season. So there's going to be a, a small fraction of fertilizer. And it's basically said it's going to work with county governments to make sure the distribution. Uh, and and it's, it's basically said Eastern, Central, and Western Kenya, the, kind of the breadbasket areas of the country. Now, those are the places where the soils are most hammered. We talk about severe degradation of soil where the soils are actually, even the fertilizer response is extremely low because the, the organic carbon structure of the soil is basically depleted. So you throw soils, you throw fertilizer, and basically there's just very little response. So the yield response that is commensurate to the fertilizer application is actually out of work. And you're basically going to be throwing fertilizer into the soil and most of it is going to go into the water systems. So again, this is where we, we, we want the government in the, in the next few years, in the next few months, to go back to existing strategy. And it goes back to, to, to the questions that, uh, the, uh, that the Deputy, De Deputy President Kachaka was raising, saying that there's no system. There's actually a strategy that points out some of the critical problems. So now you're going to throw a lot of money. And, and, and my other question is, the government has been, the President was very clear today that he is ending subsidies. They're costing a whooping 144 billion that we can't afford. I get that. But now you're saying that you're cutting subsidies in petroleum uh, and you're cutting, that completely, but you're moving the subsidy to something else called fertilizer. And we know very, very well, and my friend David Dean knows this extremely well, mm -hmm. the subsidies in, especially in Akasho inputs, has, has failed. Tegimeo has done a lot of work on this one. And, and there is countless, there's tomes of studies that show that input subsidies have just not worked. They've not delivered the, 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 the requisite uh, yield response uh, that we expect on the other side. Uh, now, have, the, have the studies shown why they have The studies have shown why, because first is the, the inefficiencies in distribution. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at fertilizer, for instance, one is why is fertilizer expensive in Kenya? It is because of the pot handling inefficiencies. Mm. The demerage costs is one number one, and then the transportation cost, the bad roads, and then the, 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 the warehouse cost, uh, cost and all of that, and then you have all of the corruption that happens in the middle in, in terms of the distribution part. And in Nigeria, it, it was proved that 
only one third of subsidized fertilizer actually reached farmers at the price that was prescribed by government. Mm -hmm. So, so th and Malawi now is in serious problems with fertilizer subsidy. They, they can't afford it. At, at some point, the, the, the Minister for, uh, for Agriculture basically scrapped them. Uh, the, the president, in a panic, basically restricted them. Sri Lanka is collapsing because they just can't now afford fertilizer subsidies anymore. So th there are ways to reimagine agricultural transformation that goes way beyond just hybrid seed and fertilizer. He's talking about responding to climate change. The smart uh, agriculture. There is agroecological approaches that basically reduce the, the use of fertilizer, that basically uh, uh, harness the, the synergies that come out of integrated livestock and crop management systems. Now, our, our farms are very small. They, they, they're actually the right places to test some of these uh, innovative ideas in terms of reducing uh, reliance and dependence on fertilizers that come out of fossil fuels that are too expensive. Uh, and come from global supply chains that are often uncertain, especially when you have uh, global pandemics and, and the war in Ukraine, for instance. So I think over the next few months, we want to see more details. Now, one last point is CBC. He's actually recommended an education review task force. Mm. And I'm sure parents are now panicking so a lot celebrating. about what's going to happen. <laughs> now, the problem is that you're just going to be, it, it, it's, it's a pendulum, it's a yin and yang. And, and, and the question is, What's going to happen to the case we're going to grade six? He's basically said that, that this surge that will lead to about 2.5 million kids getting into school uh, in January, he says he's going to help manage that process smoothly. But he's, he's also saying, on the, other, on the other hand, that we will have to revisit, to use mm -hmm. uh, President Uhuru's words, uh, CBC. Now, I hope we don't throw away the baby with the bathwater, mm. that we take a very respectful and, 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 and cautious look at this. Uh, because this came actually during Kibaki's time. The CBC agenda was uh, Professor Diambo. Uh, it, it did not start during uh, uh, President, President Kenyatta's time. So they were just basically trying to implement it. Now, the, 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 the faults and the flaws of 844 did not really, in the first instance, warrant a total overhaul of the system. It, 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 what, it, what it required was basically to really understand the critical inputs into the education system that have, we have not invested in. One is teachers, facilities, and equipment to support the kids to learn. Now, everything else you can, you can, you can walk around. You know, whether you call the thing 632633 uh, three, three, or you call it 844 or you call it 763, it doesn't really matter. Mm. It, 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 the curriculum is just the organization of the delivery. Now, what we need to think about is our kids running, learning the right material that is going to prepare them for jobs that cannot even be named today. Are they learning for the future? The most critical skills about critical thinking, critical evaluation, communication, empathy, teamwork, and all of these things. And how do we transmit this alongside the technical uh, cognitive skills that are needed? So, so I, I think w what I would expect, and, and, and as you said, a lot of these things will come to full light when the president unveils his cabinet, when you see the men and women who will be charged with the responsibilities of executing these things. And Keys, agriculture, health, education, finance, uh, finance treasury, in, uh, enterprise, industry. We haven't even talked about manufacturing, because you're talking about jobs. Yes. Where will jobs come from? Uh, 